20th of September, 1758. My very dear children, the spring and summer of our sorrow have given way to autumn. We have taken leave of Princeton and bidden farewell to all those at the college who share our grief at the loss of your esteemed father, sister, and her husband. For over 30 years, Mr. Edwards was my beloved husband, and our uncommon union was blessed times 11 when you children were given into our home. How then I can now live without my dear companion, I cannot say. I know only that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, my dear children, I have therefore resolved to set down for you and your children to come that which I know of the manner of man that was Jonathan Edwards. Pray I may do so while I have my health. My frame shudders with a terrible weakness. But though my body betrays me, my senses do not. And they apprehend as if it occurred but a moment ago the life I shared with your dear father. Oh, the memories we shared. I was a girl of but 13 when Mr. Edwards and I met in my father's home in New Haven. He was the most serious young man. My father, James Pierpont, was the teacher of the church there. And he had amassed a collection of learned books, such as to rival any in the colonies. Would that I had them to share with my children. But they'll have to visit them at the college, for he gave many to found the collegiate school, now called Yale. He had plenty enough, however, to attract the eager attention of one Jonathan Edwards. I used to sport with Mr. Edwards. It was my father's library that drew him, not his daughter. 